Today we're going to be taking a look at the Joyo Zombie 2. What's up everybody, welcome to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Taylor and I do all sorts of guitar related stuff like this on my channel. If that's something you enjoy, make sure to subscribe and click the bell notification icon so you don't miss any of my uploads. Today we're going to be following up a video that I made on the Joyo Vivo Bandamp and if you didn't get a chance to see that, I'll link it up here for you. My overall conclusion with the Vivo was I thought it was a really great value and that it definitely could keep up with the drummer. I mean, you can totally substitute it for a full-size tube head. And although you don't have nearly the same control over your tone like you would with like a full-size tube head, I think it more than does the job and I think it punches well above its weight class. So today we're gonna be looking at one of the newer XL versions of the Bantamp, the Joyo Zombie 2. Now all of the Bantamps are simulating popular amplifiers and you can usually tell because they have these sort of like Easter egg names here. So like you can see with the Zombie 2, the M and the B is white as well as the 2, meaning it is simulating a Mesa Boogie dual rectifier. Now the main difference in between the XL version and the original version is the XL version has an extra set of controls so that you can control each channel independently. And that really comes in handy, especially if you do a lot of switching back and forth in between your distorted and your clean channels. The XL versions also come with a foot switch and a quarter inch headphone output. Now again, if you saw my Vivo video, you know how I felt about these amps. I was super impressed and I was really surprised by the tone and not only the tone, but how well the amp retained the tone at higher volumes. A lot of times with these smaller low wattage amplifiers, they just completely fall apart at louder volumes. And I can tell you from firsthand experience with both of these band amps that they just don't do that. They sound really good and they retain their tone through the full volume range. In today's video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug the Zombie 2 into my Mesa 4x12 that's back here. We'll mess with the settings a little bit. We'll see how loud the amp gets and how it sounds at those louder volumes. We'll also try boosting the amp and running an effects pedal through the effects loop. And then at the end of the video, we're gonna shoot it out against this actual dual rectifier that's sitting behind me here so that we can see how close it actually sounds to a dual rectifier. But before we do that, I just wanna plug some stuff here really quick. If you enjoy my videos and you want to help me keep making them, there is a support section down in the description below with all sorts of stuff like affiliate links, links to my band merch, links to my Patreon and things like that. And if you could go down there and check it out, I would really appreciate it. All right, with all of that out of the way, let's plug this guy in and see how it sounds. What's up everybody? I'm here plugged into the Joyo Zombie 2. I'm playing through my Solar 1.6 FRC, which has an EMG 81 in the bridge and an 85 in the neck. If you watch my channel, you've probably heard me say that a million times. And I have the Joyo Zombie 2 powering a Mesa 4x12 with vintage 30s and mic'd up with an SM57. And if this scene looks a little bit different here, it's because this was actually shot after the video. I forgot to say this part. So uh, yeah, it's a little bit like a premonition from the future. Okay, I have some fire effects going on in the background because it's the rectifier. I know, it's a bad joke. I'll be here all night. All right, enough with the sillies. Let's turn this guy on. Okay, so out of the two Joyo band amps that I have and that you've seen on my channel, the other being the Vivo, I prefer this one. I think that this one has better low end without sacrificing the top end, meaning to get good like low end thump out of it, you don't have to dial the tone all the way back and end up sacrificing all of your top end. And it just sounds really mean. <laughs> I mean, it really reminds me of a Mesa dual rectifier a lot, especially when I'm playing open chords like that and the amp can breathe a little bit. Let's dial the two knobs. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's dial it a little bit and see what else it can do.
I really enjoy this tone a lot. To be honest with you though, the characteristic of the distortion is a little bit tighter to me than what I normally hear from a dual rectifier. Like I would define the distortion on a dual rectifier as sort of like fizzy and loose, and this is like really tight by comparison, but maybe that's just me. I don't know. And since this is a Bantamp XL, that means it has independent controls for the clean channel of this amplifier. And it also comes with a foot switch, which is down here. You can't see it because it's out of frame and I didn't really think about that before I set up this shot. You put the foot switch up here. So for the foot switch to switch the channels on this amp, the amp has to be set to the clean channel. And then you can use the foot switch to switch between clean and distorted. Here's the clean channel. Let's dial this gain back and turn the tone up a little bit here. Yeah, I definitely think the clean channel sounds much better on this amp and probably all of the XL Bant amps in general. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that you have a separate gain control on the clean channel and you can dial it back to get your cleans, you know, really clean. So if having a really pristine clean channel is important to you, that's probably something you want to consider if you're looking at the Bant amps. And the foot switch, you know, it's got one of those, which definitely comes in handy if you need to switch to your clean channel. Right, let's go back over to the overdrive channel. We use the foot switch this time. Hey! this on my last video and I probably should have I just didn't think to so as you can see here I am at a very reasonable volume on this amplifier I have a dark mode too so you can see what's going on here okay so so as you can see we're in between 52 and 56 there and to be honest with you it's still pretty loud in the room I know that's really hard to convey across YouTube but um it's pretty loud Maybe it wouldn't keep up with the drummer who slams his drums loud, but uh, we'll get it there for sure. Let's turn this guy up. Okay, so like you can see there, we're pressing in between 75 and 80. And to be honest with you, I don't think that that meter is really doing it justice because it is extremely loud in this room, like shaking the floor loud. <laughs> I definitely wouldn't play with it at that volume. I think it's too loud, probably even like with a drummer that would be a bit loud. Hopefully that gives you guys an idea of this amplifier's capabilities and how loud it can get, especially, you know, powering a Mesa 4x12 cabinet with vintage 30s. To be 100% honest, I'm really impressed with how loud this amplifier gets and not only how loud it gets, but also how much the tone stays intact at those high volumes. In my experience with solid state amplifiers, sometimes when you get them up that loud, they start to break up in a really unpleasant way and they just really don't retain the tone at those louder volumes they start to get muddy and sound really nasty but uh not the band amp the band amp sounds awesome <laughs> Okay, if you know me and you are familiar with my channel you know that i am not going to make a video about an amplifier without boosting it so Let's do that. I have a TMD 33 volt preamp, which is my go-to boost these days. I'll leave a link for that in the description below if any of you are interested in checking them out, but they're really awesome pedals. You should definitely go check them out. This one's custom etched, so it is not available on their website, but it is the same exact pedal as the 33 volt preamp, just uh, with a little bit different aesthetic to it. And uh, yeah, here's what it sounds like. <laughs>
Yeah, guys, definitely go check out TMD pedals. They make killer pedals. Even though that's not the subject of today's video, I could easily get distracted and just uh, mindlessly noodle on this rig for hours. Let's throw an effects pedal in the effects loop and do something with that. Okay, now this thing is starting to look like a hot mess and you can't see the reverb pedal that I plugged in in this camera here, but you can see it in that camera over there. As long as you can see it in one of them, right? I just plugged in this guy and turned this thing on so I have no idea what it's gonna sound like, but uh, let's go for it. <laughs> Sounds kind of what I expected it to sound like, to be honest with you. Sometimes I like just a little bit of reverb on my rhythm patches and, um... because then it sounds like that. Sometimes just a scotch of reverb will really add this like nice sheen and gloss over your tone and um, take out a little bit of the harshness in the top end. Hopefully I mic that up okay and this sounds good because it sounds amazing in the room. And just like the other band amps, this one also has a Bluetooth option. So if you wanted to, you could switch the Bluetooth on here, the little LED turns blue, and then you can connect to it with a Bluetooth device to do some playback through. We're now pairing with the Zombie 2. Okay, we're now paired with the Zombie 2. And... And that is coming out of the speakers. Okay, I'm being a little silly there, but you get the idea. You can connect to this with a Bluetooth device and play tracks back through the zombie head, which is really cool, especially if you were using the headphones. Maybe not so much if you're plugged into a cabinet like this because it will play it through the speaker, but if you're using headphones, that could be really cool to like sit down and you know be able to jam out to some of your favorite songs or maybe not your favorite songs, whatever your prerogative is. Okay, so we've heard what this thing sounds like plugged in playing through it live, but what does it sound like in a mix? That's what you guys always want to know. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to compare this to a Mesa dual rectifier in a mix and we'll try them both boosted and not boosted. And I'll try and dial the Mesa dual rectifier in sort of the same ballpark as the Zombie 2 since, you know, the Zombie 2 doesn't have as many controls. We'll try to get them on even ground so that way you can hear the differences or similarities between the two amps. Okay, let's go check that out.
All right, what do you guys think of the Joyo Zombie 2? Do you think it sounds similar to a dual rectifier? Let me know down in the comments below. I really like the Zombie 2 a lot. I think I prefer this to the Vivo, but if you guys want to see a shootout between them or you want to see a shootout between one of the other Bantamps, leave me a comment below and let me know which ones. As always, thank you so much to my patrons. Your contribution is greatly appreciated. And if you'd like to help me keep making videos like this, there's a link to my Patreon in the description below. And as always, if you like this video, make sure to hit the like button, consider subscribing, and I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.